Good morning, afternoon or evening wherever you are. I'm Paul Clark and welcome to my studio. So what I've got for you lovely lot today. Well, spring has sprung, the grass has riz and all that stuff. So we're going to be having a go at this lovely butterfly. But I also want to talk to you a little bit about backgrounds, how we can use them to our advantage, how we can use contrast to really help make your main subject pop out. So come and join me and we'll paint this step by step together. So here is the stunning photo reference which I got from Pixabay and with the help of Mr Google I think this is known as a peacock butterfly. So if we have a closer look you can see the background is predominantly dark which really helps to give a strong contrast making the butterfly pop out against the background. Now on my first attempt I had decided to do the opposite and paint in the lighter background but the mistake I made was all the background values are very similar to those of the butterfly. So he's just getting a bit lost within the painting. And you can see this if we switch to black and white, all very similar values. Now this could have worked better if I'd painted the background much lighter, shown here with a little Photoshop wizardry. But in the end, I chose to be bold and brave and go for the darker background. So if you're having a go at this, I think both approaches can work well, but if you're going for the lighter background, keep it subtle. Okay, so for today's materials, my paper is some Arsh, it's a cold press finish, 140 pound, 100% cotton, and it's on a block so it won't need stretching, but of course any decent watercolour paper will do. My colours today, and there's loads of them, I have cadmium yellow, cobalt blue, magenta, Cadmium orange, dioxidine purple, ultramarine blue, sap green, cadmium red, and some paints grey, and just three brushes from my range, a mop, number 12, and number 6 round. And here is the pencil sketch, which of course is free to download from my website, link in the description below. So the only masking fluid I'm going to use is just a little tiny touch along here on his antenna. Right, so I'm going to paint the background in sections. So I'm starting by wetting with lots of clean water just this corner area using my large mop brush. Then straight in with a fairly thick consistency of dark sitting purple to suggest these flowers. But I want them to be really soft, out of focus, not defined at all. And here a little touch of magenta with a few little flicks here and there of cadmium orange. But for these flowers, if you are painting along, you can really paint them in any colours you like. here a touch of sap green still going in very wet. Next I'm dropping in a few little blobs of clean water hopefully to create some interesting backgrounds. So now that's dry, I'm now going to wet the rest of the background. This time I'm using my number 12 brush as I need to paint fairly carefully around the butterfly. So next I'm going in with a really dark value here and this is a mix of sap green with some Payne's Grey added in. And I've also mixed a lot of my greens for my normal combination of cobalt blue and cadmium yellow. Now I'm going to be using lots of mixes of colours into this background, so it's just too many to list them all. So it's a good opportunity for you to experiment and just play around with the colour. But it is a good idea to have them all pre-mixed first because you have to work quite fast to get everything in while that background is still wet. Cool. 
coarse, a bit of splatting into the wet for some random texture. So if you think things are beginning to just dry a little bit too quickly, then you can always spray it with a quick spray of clean water. Now, as I want to create the illusion of movement in this tip of the wing, I'm just softening here with clean water. So I'm just suggesting a few flowers here way in the distance. And I'm just tilting my board here to a slight angle just to get a bit of movement with the paint. And you can see here a little river of paint creeping around the edge of the wing. Now when it's dry it usually is a little bit disappointing because some of the brightness of the paint is lost but I have got some lovely granulation from using the ultramarine blue. Okay so when that's totally dried I'm coming back in with my spray bottle and just lightly wetting this corner area only but not saturating it. Then I'm just painting a few of these flower details directly on top and those little sparkles of water will just help to slightly diffuse the paint. So now we need to let this totally dry. So it's a perfect time for a short break. And what about a glass of Brewdog Butterfly Effect West Coast IPA? Okay, so now for the butterfly itself. Now I'm gonna start with some Payne's Gray just to paint in all these dark details. Now I normally would work from light to dark, but putting in these dark values first will just help me see where all the different colors are located on the butterfly, if that makes sense. And you can see I'm softening a lot of the edges with clean water. And all of these details are done with my smaller number six brush. So a little bit about the peacock butterfly. Now its proper name is the, right, here we go, the Aglaeus Io. Now I'm sure that's not right. Anyway, its spectacular markings of eye spots make it one of the most recognized of all species, designed to startle and confuse all predators. It's mainly found in Europe, Asia, and as far east as Japan. Now, it's not to be confused with the American peacocks, which have very different markings and are not close relatives. Now, they can be found in woods, fields, parks, gardens, and our greenhouse. But all good, he found his way out in the end. Anyway, I don't know an awful lot about butterflies, but I do think they're wonderful things to look at and paint. Now you can see here, I'm dragging my brush fairly quickly across the surface of the paper to try and create some of that lovely feathery effect that you see on butterflies. Again, I'm constantly using clean water to soften some of these edges.
So painting in those dark bits first has really helped me establish where to put in the colour. So here I'm just putting in a watery wash of cobalt blue around the centre of the eyes. And a touch here on his body. Okay, so next I'm part wetting his wings here because I really want to make sure that all these lovely colours, all the paints move and blend on the paper. Okay, so there's going to be too many colours to mention them all, but I will list them all below the screen. Okay, so I'm going to be using some cadmium red here, but any warm red will do. Now, as I often say, try and paint things with as few brush strokes as possible. And using a larger brush like this number 12 will really help you not fiddle with lots of detail. And with every new color I use, I'm really not worried that the previous color hasn't dried yet, because if these colors blend a little, then that's all part of the effect. So for his bright red wing here, really make sure you get a lot of pigment on your brush. It's important that this colour remains nice and bright. And soften the edge here with some clean water. And for the shadow part of the wing here, I'm adding in a really nice thick consistency of the magenta. Okay, so I'm going to let that first section of washes totally dry, then I'm going to build them up again by glazing and layering similar colours on top. Now this beigey colour is just gone a little bit light, so I'm just repainting again. Next, I'm just using some watery burnt umber here to help build up the shape of his, hang on, just need to look this up, his thorax and abdomen. Now, for these more detailed sections, I'm painting in with a very watery mix of burnt umber and Payne's grey, and this section is being filmed in real time. find that smudging with your finger can help to get a nice crusty edge to some of these brush strokes.
And here I'm just darkening a few of the layers and adding in a few little details here and there. So as you know, when a lot of these colours dry, they tend to go a lot lighter and paler. So I'm just strengthening the whole butterfly by adding this bright orange on top. Next for my famous smudging with a damp tissue technique and I'm sort of angling in these smudges towards the butterfly to create this sort of subtle zoom effect which should draw the eye towards the butterfly. And of course softening here will just help to push the background further into the distance. Now with the tip of the wing here I really wanted to create a lost edge and a sense of movement so I'm just blending it subtly into the background and the same over here. Right, just making sure everything is totally dry before removing the masking fluid. And then just painting in his antenna with a very watery mix of burnt umber. Next, for those lovely little white highlights, I'm using some thick and gooey white gouache straight from the tube. I think these two little white patches on his wing are quite important. Now as a final touch I'm just adding a little bit of colour here into the background using a soft pastel and just smudging in with my finger. Definitely don't want to overdo this. There we go, all done, and this one in just over three hours. But hang on. So last night I came across this photograph reference of the peacock butterfly, and you can see on the wings the colours are much, much brighter than what I've got on my painting.
So with my number six brush, I'm really going super strong with all these colors. really strong consistency of cerulean blue here and then finally just freshening up some of those white highlights yep this time we're done well, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did and you'll give it a go. Whether you decide to go for a light background or a dark background, just enjoy yourself, relax, and of course, make it your own. And as always, please don't forget to like, subscribe if you haven't already, it is free. Leave a comment, I do read every single one. Can't always reply to them all. And again, I look forward to seeing you all again next week for another Watercolor Wednesday. Take care, have a great week. Cheers now.